So, how does it feel coming to work on your last day as a single woman? It feels wonderful going to work at all, just anywhere away from my mother. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why it's all like the end. You know, just in you and me and you close family and friends. She's telling us a complete circus. Well, that's what mothers do. You look lovely in that dress. Why it? Think so? I just think I would look quite nice in my suit as well. All the music of life seems to be. It's uh, Dolly Smith, not Donald. Like Show you your rest home. Morning, Lizzie. Ah, all set for the big day tomorrow then? Let it be. See you later. See you. Did I hear you mention Dolly Smith? Mm. Excuse me, I'm here for Dr. Wetherill. Um, hang on a sec, please. Well, just watch yourself. Remember all the trouble we had with her and her daughter? All those outrageous allegations? Yeah. Well, I think that's in the past now. She's just another sick old lady. Oh, I don't feel well. Wait, your turn! I've eaten something. Uh, I'm sorry, have you got an appointment? No. She was talking to me. Smith. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm sorry to be a trouble to you, Doctor. Uh, I, I'm not one to complain as a rule. Hey, we'll have less of that. If you don't complain, I don't have a job. Oh, <laughs> do you hear that, Mr. Calder? You'll have to ask him to put you on his books. Oh, why? Is there something wrong? Just age, son. Just old age. I told you I do not want it. Thank you. In August. Please yourself. Now then. Oh, uh, well, uh, it was bad enough when it was in my ankle, but uh, now I think it's in my back. Well, I'd better have a look at that, hadn't I? Excuse me, miss. Is there someone who can help me take Mrs. Smith back to her room, please? I'm serving. Oh. Well, if there's someone else that can help. They're all busy. I'm sorry, but I need to examine my patient. <sighs> Down there on the left. She knows what it is. Well, thank you so much. Well, we seem to have collected a fair amount for the wedding present. Have we had any idea about what to buy? Mm. Well, it's traditional to get them something to help them start out in their life together. I don't think they'd thank you for a job lot of tea towels and toasters. Oh, I quite agree. Well, I'm sure we can rely on Ken to find something appropriate. Something antique, perhaps. What do you think, Ken? Uh, yes, Mr. Millich. Um, excuse me. Will we be seeing Mrs. Rose at the wedding? Visiting her brother in Eastbourne, I'm afraid. All right, love. Oh, Dad! Oh, what's all? He's left. Who's left? Damn, he's left me. He's left all. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, let's get your cuppa. Alan, come on the desk. I think it's only bed sores, Doctor. Well, there's nothing only about bed sores, Mrs. Smith. Hmm. I think it might be easier to treat you in hospital. Would that be okay? Oh, please. Yes, please. No. No, 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 no. I, I will not. Yes, you no, will. No, no. Leave him alone. I'm not having any more nonsense today, will he? Leave him be. He doesn't eat meat. You're going to eat up all your lovely stew like a good boy. I would rather stop. Stop being so difficult. No. Can't you just find no, him some no, else? No, no, no. <sighs> If you won't open your mouth, I'll have to hold your nose. I'm admitting no, Mrs. Smith no, no, into no, no, hospital. No. <laughs> and last night, <laughs> last night, he said her name's Marlene. And he's going to live with her. Now, 
down in the middle and so <laughs> Sorry. Oh, come on. You've nothing to be sorry about. He says he's been seeing her for nearly a year. He's been lying to me that long. A little. Well, will I tell your mother? Oh, what's she going to say? She's going to think it's my fault. No, she won't. She'll think the same as me. It's not just you who's betrayed, Lizzie. It's the whole family. What am I going to do? Oh, come on, why don't you go home here? Put your feet up. I can't. Not yet. The place still smells of him. I best get back to work. Hey, hey, you'll do nothing of the sort of state you're in. You'll stay here. Alan can look after reception perfectly well. Come on. <laughs> I was here first. Alan, I need Mr. Hobson's notes now. I'm urgent. Right, sorry. I'll just go through to Dr. Weatherill, shall I? No. Hello, you the way. can't do that. I didn't mean you. Hey, come back. Sorry, can you hang on a sec? Please? I told you you couldn't do that. Yes, Lizzie. I'll tell you in a minute. Dr. Wetherill always sees me without an appointment. No, she doesn't. Downstairs. The stomach's I'm really churning. I think I'm going to be sick. Nonsense. No, no, you can't. But look, hang on. What on earth is going on? <laughs> oh, sorry. No need to apologise. Francis, isn't it? Only to me mother and me first headmistress. My friends call me Frankie. So what do I call you? Well, that depends how friendly you want to be, doesn't it? Look, I can't stop. I've got an emergency call out of the old folks home, but maybe I'll see you later. Maybe. When Dr. Wetherill is free, your name will be called. Please take a seat. Hmm. Thank you very much. Excuse me, dear. <coughs> I'd like to see Dr. Wetherill, please. And your name is Mrs. Wetherill. Her mother. I admitted a patient from the Shoreview Rest Home this morning. Now, apart from having the most horrific bed sores, she's exhibiting signs of vitamin deficiency. Well, she's dirty. I'm kept. Mother, I can't stop the chat and work. That's why I'm here. I thought you wouldn't have time to do it. So I found you a very good hairdresser. Didn't the uh, relatives complain? In this case, there aren't any available. I bet some of them have got family. Ah, uh, your cousin Jane's been booked no, for nine. No, I'm going to do my own hair. Oh, okay. don't be silly, Jill. Not Jill. Not I mean... Disgusting, you know, dumping your old folk in the bin like that and walking away. Mm. Anyway, I'd like to take a look at all the residents there, if I may. Jill. Sure. Go ahead. Um... Uh, mother, this is uh, Mr. Rose, our visiting consultant. Mr. Rose, this is my mother, Bunty Wetherill. Ah, you're Gordon's best man, are you? What? Uh, no, actually, that's me. Jeff Goodwin, partner. Minion and General Dog's body. Oh. <laughs> well, I do hope you haven't planned anything disgraceful for Gordon Stagnant. Rest assured, madam, I shall be there to see that everyone behaves with the utmost propriety. Yell in bed for long, Mrs. Smith. I do try to move around, but it's difficult, you know, because there's nobody to help me, you see. And I'm sorry, but you do sometimes feel it just makes their job easier if you if you stay shut in your room. They lock you in. Well, at nights mostly. What if you need to use the bathroom? Well, I have talked to them about it. I said if they'd just leave the door open, they'd hear us calling. Don't you worry. You'll be heard in here. Oh, yes. Can we make them uncomfortable? Of course. Oh, now, can I sit up? Yes. Oh, let's get a pillow behind you. There we go. That's better, thank you. Uh, how's the food? <laughs> Oh, well, you know, most of us in there are brought up families during the war, so we're used to going short. <laughs> and how short is that? Well, oh, I feel I'm telling tales, really. I, I mean, old people, well, we don't use much energy, you see. A healthy diet's important at any age, Mrs. Smith. Well, uh, we had enough, I suppose, and... There's always plenty of sago pudding. The basin's full of sago pudding to eat 
if you were still hungry after your meal. Oh, no. That's what they used to do to us at school. Oh, it's Mr Calder I felt sorry for. You know, Matron said his not eating meat was just a fad and she wasn't having any of it. But, you know, it's not a fad for him. No, I mean, he's written books about it and everything. Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, he was quite an intellectual in his day. We used to call them uh, free thinkers in the 20s. <laughs> and he... Uh, it diminishes our human spirit if we choose to satisfy our appetites through the death of another creature. That's what he said. <laughs> it's a pity, though, at our age up there, you don't get to choose anything anymore. I mean, <laughs> they diminish your spirit whether you like it or not. <laughs> OK, um... I've got some calls to make. But Sister Bridget here will take good care of you. Um, what did you say Matron's name was at Shoreview? I didn't. But it's Mrs. Hedges. Thank you. Thank you. He's nice, isn't he? I do understand that you've had domestic difficulties, Lizzie. But if you're going to take time off, then do it properly. Take a day's sick leave. While you're in the building, I do not expect to have to do your work for you. Yes, Matron. <coughs> Here you are. And Alan sends these. I'm at my wit's end. Oh, what about a nice tea set? Here. Have a look in here. Antique? Nah, nah, I'd have had it down the dealers if it was. No, it's only about 30 years old, but uh, you can have the old lot for a fiver. It's a good nick mine, no chips or cracks or nothing. Hey, it's not dodgy out, is it? Hey, what do you take me for? Now, it's a uh, house clearance over Whitby way, so what do you reckon? I reckon you've got a deal, three quid. What I want to know is why I was only called today. Mrs Smith's bed sores should have been attended to weeks ago. Well, she only complained the other day. Well, that's not the point. Old people don't complain. Well, half of them through there, they're not even capable of complaining. It should be routine to notice things like that. We can't all afford to have trained nurses at our beck and call. Four of the patients I've spoken to say they have diarrhoea most of the time. Some of my old folk have weak digestions. No, they don't. They have low-level food poisoning. It's probably endemic. And looking at the state of these kitchens, I'm not at all surprised. Dr Goodwin, I do the best I can with the stuff I can get and the money I'm given. If you don't like it, I suggest you take it up with the council. Oh, I will, Mrs Hedges. Trust me. I will. From tomorrow, of course, we're going to have two Dr. Ormerods in the hospital. So I hope you won't mind spending your wedding night devising some code by which we can tell you apart. <laughs> <laughs> to avoid confusion. <laughs> so, it only remains now for me, on behalf of us all, to present you with these gifts and wish you every possible good luck, health and happiness in your life to come. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's, um... That's very kind. Uh, I'd just like to say on a personal note that, um, well, having Jill by my side is really all the luck I'll ever need. Oh. Oh, thank you. May we open the presents now? Oh, no, that would be awfully bad luck. Oh, right. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing you all tonight. Sister Bridget and I will be thinking about you. Have a wonderful time. So, ladies and gentlemen, the toast is Wedded Bliss. Wedded Bliss. <laughs> Just a small dry sherry for me, thank you. Nonsense. If one is to do a stag party at all, one has a duty to do it decently. That'll be six pints of bitter and six whiskey chasers, if you please. Thank you. Well, it's charming to meet you at last, Mrs. Ormerod. You must call me Betty Bunty. Now that we're going to be related. Who's paying for this, anyway? Uh, I think three bottles of the Krug 59 to start with. Very Thank good, you. madam. Thank you. 
Mr. Middleditch, may I introduce to you my future father-in-law, Fred Weatherall. Yeah. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. You're his boss, are you? Well, I'm not sure I could. I put it quite like that, no. Oh, no point in being modest about it. I've been the boss of my own company for 30 years now. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And what line are you in? Textiles, man and boy. I used to do run-of-the-mill Macclesfield Fair, but 10 years ago, I looked into the future, and I saw that it were made of crimpling. I'm very big in crimpling now. So, Jane, what do you do? I'm sorry? Uh, for a job? <laughs> Good Lord, I'm far too busy to have a job. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Quite right, too, as you'll find out as well, Jill, once you're married. Well, I think when, um, when Jane says she's too busy, she means she's too busy shopping. Isn't that right, Jill? Well, of course. Yeah, and there's cleaning and keeping the house nice. You giving up your job? Um, no. Does Gordon know that? <coughs> Come on, man, where's your stamina? Cheers, Mr. Rose. I'm gonna have to go outside for some fresh air in a sec. Uh, you don't have a good mind to find our Dave and give him what for? What he's done to my Lizzie. I know, Ken. I know. He needs to be taught a lesson. It's just you see. That's what grown old should be all about. It's about being with your, your family and your friends. Having a drink and a chat. Forgive me, Jeff, but, um, I have to ask. Dolly Smith, she does have a history of, well, making things up. Are you sure? I saw it, Gordon. <laughs> I smelt it. It sounds very serious for a stag night. No, 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 no. We're just, uh, we're just discussing the perils of growing old. Ah, good on fighting. Never give an inch. That's my advice. Well, let's hope we all have that choice. She'll make you a fine wife, young Wetherill. Yes. Yes, I do. As long as she doesn't turn into a mother. Hmm? I agree with Jill on this one, actually. I think a man appreciates a woman who does more than sit around waiting for him to come home. Excuse me. What's the matter with her? Having been sitting around waiting for her husband for some time, she's just found out he's leaving her. Well, I'm sorry, but that's hardly my fault, is it? Hiya. What are you doing out here? Just needed a bit of air. Me too. Listen, Lizzie, I'm sorry about what well, you know. Yeah, so am I. For what it's worth, I think he's out of his mind. And when he comes to his senses, he'll soon realise what he's lost. And he'll come running back. I don't know if I want him back. Not after this. No? Huh? Oh, Alan, I just don't know anything anymore. Yeah, you do. You know you're a kind... Clever, smashing lass who deserves better. Thanks. Come on. Either I go and have a quiet cigarette, or I wait for that tailor woman to make one more sarky comment about social parasites and then a smacker on the nose. Shan't be long. Uh huh. Exhausted? Yes. Yes, we just keep telling yourself we've got the rest of our lives together, on our own, and in perfect peace. Gordon, mm -hmm. you're not, um, you're not expecting me to give up work after we're married, are you? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Oh. Good, just checking. Mm. See you later. Something tells me something's gonna happen tonight. I read in the papers that Jim and I keep I say. I don't suppose you have a light, do you? Sorry, I don't smoke. That's the problem with making grand exits, isn't it? One can hardly go back in to pick up all one's bits and pieces without looking a fearful twerp. <laughs> so what have you made a grand exit from? Uh, the most ghastly function, full of worthy, provincial, tedious people. 
Are you staying in the hotel? Yeah. I've got a wedding tomorrow. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, no, no. I'm the best man. Then we obviously have a great deal in common. Well, I hope they're enjoying themselves. Gives the families a great opportunity to get to know each other, don't you think? Oh, yes. They didn't do parties for the ladies in my day. Not that I ever... I never had a party either. Cheers. myself will go in the first car. Jane, you'll bring the children in the second. What? I think they'll probably be happier with me. Absolutely not, Mrs. Ormrod. Now... Oh. I said you'd look lovely in that dress. I have not eaten flesh for 50 years. And I do not intend to start now. And I can't afford to waste perfectly good food, Mr. Calder. So you'll get it back at every meal till you do decide to eat it. Decision made under duress is no decision at all. Please excuse me. Where do you think you're going? Oh. Well, you should have thought of that earlier, shouldn't you? I haven't got time to mess about with you now. When you decide to eat your breakfast, I'll get one of the girls to bring you a chamber pot in the day room. Rings? Yes. The third time. Huh? Oh. Whew. Yeah, for some reason, I never thought I'd feel this, this nervous. It's going to be perfect. Thanks. <laughs> you have got them. The rings. By the way, where did you get to last night? Guests to the left and grooms to the right. <coughs> Hair of the dog. I think I'll require an aisle seat. at least told me it was this wedding. I thought it might be too tedious and provincial for you. <laughs> well, should we argue about it later? If you like.
Very nice. What are you doing, you silly old... Some sort of explosion. Better get back and alert the hospital. cars over to that building as fast as you can. They are my wedding cars! Now, madam, they are my ambulances. I'll try not to get in your way. Follow that car. Pull him out, yeah? Okay. One, two, three! Ah! Yeah! Okay, he's clear! Let's get him out of here. Gracious me. <coughs> Any idea what caused the explosion? Well, it was gas. We haven't found any fractured pipes yet. There's nothing left on. It's going to be at least 20 minutes before it's safe for your people to go in. Officer, they're in there already! Get her into a neck brace as soon as you get her. No, no, help him! No need! She's as light as a feather. Something to do with their diet. Sorry, okay? I need a list of every resident and any member of staff who might have been killed or injured in the explosion. It's not my fault. Then we'll take that over the council too, shall we, Mrs. Hedges? Sit down 
10 units of O negative and they're on standby for cross matching. Ashfordly General's on major accident alert as well. Excellent. And how are we doing for ward space? Three empty beds and Ken's finding more. They're making space as fast as they can. Sister! It's all right. Sister. It's all right. Excuse me. Coming through. Excuse me. The last we can do, sister, we've got out every bed and trolley in the place. Well, nurse, two more sets of bedding, please. Sister? What is it, Mrs. Smith? I think it's the time I had a change of scenery. Help me into my chair. Come on, you too, Mrs. Garfield. If you have a broken ankle in the chair, just as well. They need every bed they can get. <laughs> Remember, don't curl. Well, just as long as you don't go singing any Vera Lynn songs, all right? Okay. Are you all right? You deal with Mrs. Baker first. We're fine here. Yeah. Okay. Sunday school, aren't we, Annie? I'm here if you need me. I know this is a terrible thing to ask. But could you possibly pretend to be Catholic for five minutes? You don't have to perform the rite or anything, but I have a desperate old lady. Comfort is comfort, in all its forms, sister. Can you tell me where it hurts, please? Can you tell me where it hurts? Fractured sternum, clavicle, first, second and third ribs on the left-hand side, possible ruptured diaphragm and internal bleeding. Can we operate? Well, we could do, but an 85-year-old man in his weakened condition is most unlikely to survive the anaesthetic. Palliative care only. No, but we have to... Next. Our first priority must be to help those who can be helped. Next patient, please, Dr. Goodwin. I'll tell you what we'll not do, Mr. Harper. You flapping around like a dispeptic chicken while we are trying yes. to deal with a crisis. <clears throat> but yeah. I'm an administrator. Yes. Then act like one. Right. Uh, make a list of all the old people's That's relatives and friends and contact them. Yes. We're going to need all the accommodation we can find. Thank you very much. Bye. I appreciate you doing this, Lizzie. Well, while I'm in the building, I may as well make myself useful. Sorry. I should have remembered. I can always rely on you in a real crisis. If there's anything you need, you know where I am. Thank you. Well, so far, I've managed to bully eight spare rooms out of my parishioners. Good. That'll do for some of the walking wounded. Excellent. Trouble is, most of them are upstairs rooms. We're going to have a few that won't have that sort of mobility. Mr. Middleditch. What? I have a three-bedroom bungalow, and uh, I don't mind sleeping on the sofa for a bit. Thank you, Mr. Harper. That's very kind of you. You have some good friends here, you know, who'd do anything for you. You could talk Dad out of searching for Dave and belting him. Now, why would I want to do that? No ward beds left. Oh. Mr. Jameson in Milner, phone his wife, explain the situation, and tell her we'll be discharging him a day early. And you can send the next one in. Right, all. I'm sorry, Matron. I know it's against the rules, but... I'm not used to doing this in high heels. Very sensible stuff, nurse. Give it another ten minutes and I shall probably do the same. Thanks, then. Go on. You've earned it. It's Oh, wow. That's not it, is it? For the time being, I reckon. Come on. Take the weight off your feet for five minutes. I'll go and find some more cups. 30 seconds more, Mike. I should go and help out on the ward. But don't you get too comfortable either. Transfer list to Ashfordly General. Right, 30 seconds it is then. There you go. Cheers.
I'm not at all happy about this, Dr. Wetherill. All right, when you go clear your office, we'll move the beds in there, shall we? Will there be a wedding? Oh, no. Mother, please, for once in your life, could you just get your priorities right? Don't be so stupid. Of course there's not going to be a wedding. Now, please, I've... I've got work to do. <laughs> Don't begrudge me, boy. It's been a long day. I wasn't going to say a word. Then what? I was there yesterday. Sat with this old man who was weeping for want of a bit of respect. I looked at the kitchen. I looked at the sanitation. I could see it was a tragedy waiting to happen, and all I did was get one old lady out so I could look at her bed sores. I'll deal with it tomorrow. I'll go through the proper channels. I should have done more. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, Dr. Goodwin. We can all reproach ourselves for what might have been, but we're not psychic. All we can do is what we can. Help those who can be helped. And you're right. Sometimes... <sighs> it's not good enough. I'm afraid we have to learn to live with that. Things are going to get better now, Mavis. They're going to build us a new home with big windows and a bit of a garden. And we'll be able to sit out in the summer and look out in the winter. She's, uh, she's gone, Mrs. Smith. I know that. I was saying it for myself as much as anything. It doesn't have to be like this, you know. My sister-in-law's got a wonderful flat just outside Nottingham. The Union built it for her. The Union? The Mine Workers' Union. My brother was a miner. They build homes for all their old people all over the place. I knew they'd got some in Newcastle. I, I used to work there. Oh, yes, yes. They're everywhere. And you can be independent if you want to be. You don't have to get pushed around. And... Oh, well. What's done is done. Someone else just said that to me. We've identified the body as that of Mr. William Calder. From the position he was in, the fire officers believe that he committed suicide by gassing himself. A spark from faulty wiring ignited the gas, and the rest you know. These are the other fatalities. Two members of staff, Sally Hope and Irene Harris, and 12 elderly people. Although that figure may rise as others succumb to their injuries. Meanwhile, we have the surviving 32 of your residents in our care. As my doctors report that, apart from injuries sustained in the explosion, most of the patients exhibit signs of malnutrition and chronic neglect, I'm afraid I have no option but to pass these findings on to both the local authorities and to the police. Good day, Mrs. Hedges. I'm OK. Everyone's being really kind, and it's good to feel no. useful. Oh, don't you worry That's about That's my girl. How are the kids? <laughs> um, I've told the wedding cars they can go OK. That's fine. 
No, 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 no. That's, that's fine. That's a good idea. I think they'll enjoy it. Oh, well done, Lizzie. You've been a real trooper today. Oh, my pleasure. Ah, so have you. Oh, I to mention it. I think we've all done our bit. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Mum. There simply was nothing else we could have done. OK. Give them all my love. Speak to you later. Bye-bye. <sighs> so, wedding day, huh? Any chance of a cuppa? I've used up all the cups on the old folk. Well, maybe it's time for you to open a wedding present after all. That's great, Wilson. Thanks for your help. Yeah, bye. Ah. Oh. Did you know the Mine Workers Union have built homes for the elderly in just about every pit town and village in the country? Really? Hmm. Now, with your permission, Matron, I'd like to set up a meeting with them to see if they can do something to help us here. Do you think it's wise to involve ourselves in politics, Dr Goodwin? Oh, well, I only want them to advise the local council on how it can be done. And besides, is it wise to leave the elderly at the mercy of people like Mrs Hedges? Oh, oh well, I think they're absolutely terrific. Oh, I say. Very, um, colourful. Well, of course. Clarice Cliff's trademark bold colours. Who? Clarice Cliff, the designer. Very popular in the 30s. Little old-fashioned now, perhaps, but, um, well, you take care of them. In a few years' time, they'll be collector's items. You mark my words. Um, <clears throat> shall we, uh, go and see if we can find another date? Yes. That was a very good find, Ken. Is it the complete set? Yeah, and the dinner set and a rose bowl. And the collection money covered it all? Uh, yes, well... Ah, uh, yes. No, 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 Kenneth. We cannot have you being out of pocket. No. Will that cover the difference? Ah, thanks very much, Mr. Middleditch. <laughs> I'm fully booked for the next three weekends. Oh, I, I could do the Friday after that. Or... No, I I'm not sure that's possible. What isn't? Uh, well, there's an odd bit of church law that says I can only marry people within the hours of daylight, uh, the canonical day. Uh, I can't do it after sunset, but uh, by my reckoning, there's still about 40 minutes of daylight left. Now, uh, I'm free. <laughs> All you have to do is touch my hand. Jill! Show me you Jill! Understand. How are you doing? Oh, I'm coming. You're going to try and find your mum? Oh, no, no, no. Too late. You're going to call me also? How do I look? Mm. You look fabulous. Come on! Everything seems to be. With this ring, I do thee wed. With my body, I do thee worship. With all my worldly goods, I do thee endow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the right words don't oh. come my way. I just know when I'm in For as much as Gordon and Jill have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and thereto have given and pledged their troth either to the other and have declared the same by the giving and receiving of a ring and by joining of hands, I pronounce that they be man and wife together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You may kiss the bride.
Gorgeous girl within my grasp. Rory? I must have died and gone to heaven. Huh? You're in the royal Rory again. Are you doing anything tonight? How about dinner at Giovanni's? Why'd you come to work dressed like a landlord? Bit drastic, indeed. You're what they call male chauvinist pigs. I'm afraid the damage is irreversible. There's no need to be so afraid, you know. Come on.